Have you ever been so bad at something? Koi mujhe pistol se maar diya bhen saale for a long number of years. Five year veteran koi mujhe that it is borderline embarrassing. Main nahi khel raha yaar. Well, it's time I did something about it. Well, apparently I've created a monster. Welcome to the first episode of Rewired. Today we are building an AI that helps me play CS:GO better. Let's do that. Okay, now before I proceed any further with this, I need to show you just how badly I need this. हेलो सर कैसे हो सर बस बढ़िया आपकी कृपा एज अ फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन रेट माय सीएस गो स्किल्स आउट ऑफ टेन रैंक है तेरी हाँ हाँ सार्जेंट रैंक इलेवन भाई मतलब तू नूब है बंदूक अपने आप मिल गई भागो भाई कोई मुझे कौन पूछ गया बहन के लोड़े कैंप करू अरे माधर चौध कोई मुझे कैंप ही नहीं करने दे रहा सब पीट रहे हैं बस भाई वो घूम रहा है बस क्या करूं मैं इसका मार दिया मैंने हेडशॉट किसी ने मुझे मार दिया हेडशॉट एक मिनट भाई मेरा कैमरा बंद हो गया था तो एक सेकंड मैं जरा फोन से ग्लोट करना चाहता हूँ छह खिल और अठारह डेथ तो छह खिल और अठारह डेथ से बेटर करना है और अब देखते हैं कि वीडियो के बाद क्या इससे बेटर परफॉर्म हो पाता है कि नहीं So now that we established that, let's talk about the plan. Basically, we're going to use machine learning to model three things. First, what we need is a classifier. Now, essentially, the classifier is something that will enable the machine learning model to distinguish between a chicken and the enemy. Now, in terms of the classifier, to make it a little more simpler, what we're going to do is play death matches. Now, if you played CS:GO before, you must be aware of this. But traditionally, there are two main divisions in the game. There's the counter terrorist team and then there's the terrorist team, which are enemies of each other. Now, in a death match, it doesn't really matter because everybody is your enemy. So it doesn't matter if you're a terrorist or a counter terrorist, you kill both of them. How that makes it simpler for us is that we only have to identify human-like objects. That's it. We don't have to divide between terrorist, counter terrorist, or whatever. They are just human-like objects. Now, the second model is the spatial awareness model. It's a bit more trickier because it has to deal with knowing where the enemies are. What I'm going to do for it is look at the map on the corner of the screen. So we're going to look at that map and we're going to figure out where the enemies are, and we're going to try and move a character. into that place so that it can aim and shoot this is a lot more tricky than it sounds because it has to deal with orientations it has to deal with height positioning and a lot of other things which are compounding together then the third model which is comparatively the simplest is to aim and shoot now once we have classified that that's the enemy it will be just a case of simple geometry to be able to compute where to shoot at but yeah that's the plan three models that if they work together would result in a better player than what i am i mean it's not that difficult okay see you Hi, it is me. Several days later, and I'm here to tell you that it is that difficult. You dumb. <laughs> so a lot did not go right. Is anybody surprised? I'm not surprised. Why do I expect so much from myself? I don't know. Well, there are a few things that did not go right as per expectation, but then there are things which went so well that it's bad. Let me explain. So let me first tackle the biggest problem that I had, and that was making the whole coordination thing work. My plan was to look at this corner map and see where my teammates had died. So the whole map was divided into x y coordinates, and I had reverse engineered how to convert that into w a s d moves. But the keyboard part was easy. The more difficult part was the mouse thing. The whole reverse parameterizing the mouse was just just. Uh, why did I do that? Why did I think this was a good idea? And then the game is so fucking nuanced. You reload a weapon, and then your position changes. You change a weapon, and then your position. Changes. How am I? How am I supposed to? Also, one of the most stupid problems that my agent had was that if I saw an enemy and then it hid behind something, my agent would just forget that it was there and just move on with its merry way. What's that about? In the end, the coordination thing did not work. So all I said was, "Fuck it." 
and I decided that I'll move the player by myself. Is it a cheat? Is it a hack? Well, you're not gonna call that after a couple of minutes. So now moving on to the thing that worked as per expectation, and that was determining whether this was an enemy or whether this was my teammate. I know I first said that I want to make things simpler, but since things weren't working, I wanted to make it more complicated so that it seems like I made something. Does that make sense to anybody else? But the classification thing worked flawlessly. I was able to distinguish between my teammates and my enemies. I was able to create bounding boxes to rectangles surrounding the agent, and that's where the problem came. Remember how I said that shooting was the more easier part and all it needed was like simple geometry? Turns out that I was right and I've created a monster. <laughs> So I think the problem is that my approach here is very mechanical, it's very binary, it's very geometric and that's why the precision is off the charts really. That's not very human-like. So I came across this paper and I'm thinking about using this as my approach. It uses a reinforcement learning technique called behavioral cloning. Did I say that right? I don't know. Now, I'm familiar with it. My master thesis was in the same topic and it kind of bums me out that I didn't think of this first. So I think I'm gonna use this approach now but beforehand I need to contact the person and ask if I can use this for my video because if it doesn't this video ends right here blank screen now hi tim can you hear me i, I feel like i'm i'm not sure how good i am about like uh talking about these types of things you know this is tim pierce he is a phd from cambridge university but more importantly for the context of the video he is the author of this paper and he's here to help us understand his model just a little bit better overall method that we're using uh, is behavioral cloning uh, which basically means that we need to capture a large amount of data of people playing the game we take a lot of screenshots of what the player is seeing and then we also try to figure out the actions that they're applying. Having these two things, we can then use usual machine learning techniques to kind of map from the visual that they're seeing to the actions that, that we think we're doing. So like most supervised machine learning models, this also follows a similar pipeline. As Tim just explained, the data collection part is rather straightforward. It's mostly just screen grabs from the various games that we were part of, along with some metadata. Now, these metadata is what is used to create the data labels for it, and that's how the machine makes sense of what's happening but the data labeling well that's a bit more tricky so unfortunately we don't have access to the ground truth what what keys and, and mouse movements did they actually take there's basically some reverse engineering that the system does to figure out okay uh you know the x y z positions changed in this way we probably pressed say w or you know if the z position suddenly increases uh they probably press jump if the ammunition decreases it's likely that they will have fired in the in the previous time step so what you're seeing right now is one of them trained models and as you can see it is fairly convincingly human now that's genuinely surprising for me because even though this model has been trained on numerous players with very different playing styles possibly how does this agent have a very unique characteristic of its own we then have this additional uh sort of expert data set uh which is when data i recorded myself i think that was around three hours but the nice thing about creating data by ourselves is we can like log the key presses and, and mouse movements that we're making uh, very precisely so you then have this very kind of high quality data set. So that's the secret right there. Creating sort of a cleanup data set that helps your pre-trained model to train even better and deliver some really convincing performance. So this model really does work. It does feel like I'm playing with the amateur human here. And if you want to know more about how he worked on this model, I have a full extended interview with Tim himself and you can find it in the description box below. Okay, back to the video. So clearly the model is much better at performing like a human than what my model did, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't come with its own drawbacks. Problem with behavioral cloning at this scale is that it's almost as good as what its data set is. So the better the player that we can get to train this model on, the better the agent would perform. So my agent kind of struggled in trying to understand which path should it go. It sometimes went to the same path back and forth over and over again. Another thing that I noticed was that it's far better at close combat than it is at long distance combat. Now these are two things that I do myself, so I'm not sure if I made it better or made it worse. But if I had the time to genuinely try and make it better, one thing that I would try and do is incorporate the sound of the game into this. The agent I kind of built just operates from the visual input. I think, it, I think particularly in Counter Strike, it's like the sound is is quite important. Yeah, you know, either someone's shooting at you and you, and you kind of have have an idea of like where it might be coming from, or maybe like there's an enemy out of sight and you hear them doing something. And then you're like, okay, I should go over there. Yeah, at the moment, the agent is, is kind of 
death. Um, so, so yeah, it, it can't act on these cues. So if an enemy is right behind you, I'm sorry, but that's just bad luck. <laughs> In any case, we have an agent, we have a model which performs like a human being. And when I set out to make this video, my only objective was that this agent was better than me. And the only way to figure that out is if I play against my own model. This is, I'm having too much fun. I'm having too much fun. Let's go. Hello again, it is time for the final battle now. So I have two setups here, one that I'm sitting on and one that's over there. So we're gonna create a team that match and we're gonna be on opposite teams. I'll be playing here, it'll be playing by itself. Let's see who's the better one. I am, I don't know why I'm so, okay. You know, one thing that I don't want to do is blame it on the lag. I hope I don't have to do that. I hope I can just beat it fair and square. Ah, the famous last words. Anyway, the game finally began and frankly, we were both off to a good start. We were both playing fairly well, but we had not yet encountered each other in the game until we did. What? Be honest, I wasn't really expecting that and I couldn't wait to meet again in an encounter. I was absolutely shocked. Shocked to see that what I wanted to achieve in this video was actually happening. But anyway, in these times of shock, what is more important is not what had happened to you before, but what is about to happen to you next. Because when you commit yourself to do the next thing, you see yourself surrounded by opportunity. Okay, let's finish the video. Okay, not bad. Come on, you have any. Or Pen Chot 16 kills, 9 death. That is not bad. That is definitely not bad. In terms of kills to death, I think highest is even. Fuck! Not bad. Not bad at all. Looking <laughs> still better. <laughs> still better than you. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I'm 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 not gonna be the best of parents to be fair. Yeah. Okay. See you. Okay guys, that is it then. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun. I can't... This is the most fun that I've had playing Counter-Strike in a long time. This is a very special game for me. Back when I was in college, we used to stay up all night, try and play in this game. And we used to do all kinds of shit. And this is one of those games that reminds me of the time when we were like reckless and free. I'm still reckless and free, but my friends are not. They are much more mature. Anyway, like you saw, the agent is pretty intuitive. You, you must have seen on screen the way it directs and predicts which way it should go. It's low-key very impressive, but at the same time terrifying. It hit me in the head like three or four times. Anyway, I'm sweating profusely, so I'll end this over here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Tim. Special, special mention to Tim. Thank you, Ashwin, for helping me out with the game. I don't usually do this, but I have a bit of a lineup of videos which is coming up in the next couple of months. These videos are something that I've been working on for the past many months now and I hope that you stick around to watch them. But yeah, until then, see you next time. It's very, very hot. Thank you. I can let you go, baby.